So you should see a little pop up that the meeting is now being recorded. Um, and then I'm just going to call out um, our advisory committee member names and just say either here or present or hi or whatever you'd like to say to indicate that you are in today's meeting. Uh, first person up is Yolanda. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm here. Happy New Year. Uh, Chavez just stepped out, but he will be back. Uh, is Michael on the line yet? Not yet. Um, Joanne. I'm here. Hello. And next, Leslie. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. I'm here. Hello. Um, Marquita does not look like she is on yet. Andrew. Present. Hello, everybody. Um, Julie does not look like Julie is on yet. Uh, how about Laura? Lars? I'm here. Can somebody turn? Can somebody turn down their um or turn their phone on mute? Thanks, Roxanne. Uh, you're next. <laughs> Roxanne, are you here? <laughs> I'm here. Michelle. Hi everybody, happy new year, I'm here. Oh, Jackie. Hey y'all. Hello. Um, Anthony, are you on yet? Not yet. Um, Anita. Here. Here. Akia. Here. Hi everyone, Akia's here. Jim. I'm here. Jim. Vanessa. Here. Thank you. Is Georgiana on? I'm. You're here, George Georgian. Your Wonderful, thank you. And then looks like Marquita has joined. Yep, I'm here. Perfect. Um, did I miss anyone? I'm here too. I'm Hi, George George Jan. Jan, I'm here. Gotcha, perfect. All right, so that is a quorum and we can start the meeting. I'm going to hand it over to Vanessa. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, Happy New Year, Vanessa. Thank Happy you. New Year. Off, Happy like New Year. All right, we'd like an adoption of the agenda. Does anyone have anything to add or would like to? If not, can I have a motion second to adopt the agenda? A second. I'll move the agenda. Second. Okay, can we have a vote roll call on uh, please? Ms. Yep, all right. Um, Yolanda. Yolanda, you're muted. No, we'll come, no, back. come back. Joanne? Yes. Adopt. Les Thank you. Leslie? 
Yes. Marquita. Oh, Marquita is not voting. Sorry, Andrew. Yes. Lars. Yes. Roxanne. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Anita. Yes. Akia. Yes. Vanessa. Yes. And uh, Yolanda, if you could just vocalize your yes. wonderful. Thank you. So that is um, that motion carries. Thank you. Now with that, we'll move on to the acceptance of um, November the 5th Green Zone um, minutes and December the 9th Green Zone minutes. Is there any, let's start with the 5th first. Um, has everybody had a chance to read them? Are there any corrections to November the 5th Green Zone minutes? No. How how about December the 9th? With that, I'll ask for a motion and a second to accept the minutes from November the 5th as well as December the 9th to be added in the record, please. So move. I need a second. Second. Roll call, Ms. Kelly. Or vote. Yep. Uh, Yolanda. Yes. Thank you. Joanne. Yes. Leslie. Yes. Andrew. Yes. Lars. Yes. Roxanne. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Yeah. Anita. Yes. Akia. Yes. Vanessa. Yes. Georgian. Yes. All right. Um, unless I missed anyone, um, I think that is, let's see, is Michael on yet? Might just be joining now. Um, that is, that motion carries. Thank you. Our next agenda item is introductions and welcome new members. In this section, new members, you probably wouldn't know what the accomplish. Well, I thought Kelly, you was going to give us our accomplishments of the no Green Zone. These were accomplished. Uh, did you want me to do that? I also thought it'd be fun if uh, the members who were participating in the last over the last year also shared what they thought but i do have a list okay yeah well yeah i thought well i thought yeah you were going to at least kind of highlight the accomplishments that we had did over the years that would be quicker than everybody trying to think of one and trying to think of a new thing okay great happy to do that um, so one of the very first things in 2020 that the Northside Green Zone Task Force did was finalize your work plan and adopt that. It was literally days before the world shut down for COVID. Um, there was um, a number of things that happened around green workforce. Um, that section of the work plan, uh, Michael and Marquita and others have been working very hard on the Northside Safety Net Initiative, uh, which will create a cohort of young adults, uh, opening them up to different organizations that do green job training um, or green have green jobs and provide some training opportunities and workforce development and hopefully career opportunities beyond um, just a one year cohort. 
Um, so some of those activities included um, applying for and receiving a grant from the EPA, from the Minneapolis Foundation, um, and, uh, and starting to move that forward. There is also work um, also in green workforce around the family tree initiative, um, which was another recommendation in our work plan. And this body, the Northside Green Zone, approved $4,000 for the family tree initiative this summer. Um, and so that led to uh, many new saplings being uh, planted in North Minneapolis. Um, there's also been some work by the city um, that Marquita has led um, around solar training um, in partnership with um, Jemez Staples at the 1200 Plymouth Avenue North Workforce Center um, and in partnership with Summit Academy. So a number of different activities just over this past year um, around green workforce. Um, related to healthy food access, uh, Michelle Shaw, one of our newest members, um, is going to be giving an update later in this meeting about an edible boulevards garden pilot that um, she has work, been working on. Um, and that is one of the activities that's in the healthy food access, access section of our work plan. Um, in terms of advancing policy, um, the draft development criteria that you all have been working on for a year and a half and have finally pulled into a draft that's ready to finalize with in partnership with the South Side. Um, that was uh, one of the action items um, in the work plan, um, as well as receiving a presentation from MPCA on air pollution. Um, and raising awareness uh, with the city council by bringing that same presentation to the city council. That was another action in the work plan. Um, and receiving a presentation from and having a conversation with Minneapolis intergovernmental relations staff on legislative priorities. That was also a work, an, an action item in the work plan. Um, one of the community education and engagement activities was to um, finalize the video that we had started working on in 2019 with DA Bullock. Um, while there isn't a final video product for that, I did receive a lot of the raw footage. And so um, if there's uh, any members of the task force that are interested in either reviewing that or uh, moving forward with kind of pulling that into a video, that's something that we could do. And that was an action item in the work plan as well. Um, and then a couple additional things. Um, the, uh, the community, um, intergenerational healing circles that Yolanda has been working on and Michelle Shaw has also stepped up to help um, her with that is my understanding. Um, so there were two that happened in early 2020 that were funded by the Northside Green Zone Task Force funding. Um, and then Yolanda, you can correct me on this, but I believe you've written a, a number of grant applications and have received um, additional funding from other sources to continue that work. Yes, we received um, the um, U-Search grant um, to continue the work. And then we have also applied for a um, research grant with the University of Minnesota that's going to be very promising. And um, then also a capacity building grant um, that will also um, assist in that continued work. It's fantastic. Um, two of our task force members also participated in the Minneapolis Climate Action Racial Equity Fund review process. Um, and the Northside Green Zone provided $3,000 for air conditioning at the Roots Birth Center. So in spite of the world shutting down for COVID, the George Floyd's murder and the uprisings I'd say y'all did a lot of work this last year, um, and, and so much of that was community-led. That is, you know, there was there was a few points there where we could say the city helped out, but it's, that's the work has been done by you all. So kudos and congratulations. Hey Kelly, did you say what happened with Jamel? That letter that we wrote for him, he got that. 
Uh, well, Jemez is on the call tonight, so he can give an update on that. Um, and our next agenda item after introductions is to go over the letter of support for his grant application. Thank you so much, Kelly. So with that being said, let's do the introduction. And in the introduction, I want you to um, state um, a, a shared goal or uh, something new um, that you would uh, like to see us work on for 2021. Um, do we want to do roll call again and let them answer like that? Or do we just want to just jump in when you fit in? How, how would you like to conduct that? Okay, well, let's do roll call, and then that way it, it, people will just get it done. All right. Um, one, one goal that you would like to see us work on, or one issue that you would like that you would like to see us go in. Okay, Miss Kelly, what you call it? Perfect. I'll go in reverse order just to mix it up. Uh, right. So, Georgianne, do you want to start? I'm I'm not clear what we're doing right at this point. You should. Are we talking goal? about the goals? Are we that talking about the goals? Yes, you introduce in, yourself. In, in general, in general, I would like to complete any of the items in the plan that we haven't been able to. Well, I All have right. a good. Uh, I have a good update for Georgianne. Yeah, for Did all of us. Is, is Georgianne next, Kelly? We what is the update you have? Yeah, we can popcorn it to Roxanne. Um, Georgianne, you brought up something to the Green Zones um, a couple years back about some work that LA was doing on emergency yes. preparedness. Yes. And I went on and I went on head with Kelly and other people and looked for resources to do that work and we got some. So we're gonna be doing that what? work this year and we could use the help from the Green Zones and from you. To do and that. So how much a, money it's, how it's, much money did we get to do the LA emergency preparedness? Uh, Green Zones didn't get the money, but the coalition community members for EJ got money to do it. Oh, okay. Environmental yeah, justice. Yeah, community members for environmental justice. It's just a coalition of folks, so anybody can be involved. And so it looks like, you know, we've got like, uh, I think maybe 16000 for stipends. And or maybe it was twenty thousand for stipends, and then sixteen thousand for organizing, um, and then we have some money to support with uh, making making some emergency preparedness, um, like backpacks or something, but also supporting okay. families as we go along. Yeah, we could talk more about it. Okay, well, keep me posted. I will. Thanks. Awesome. Ms. Thanks Ms. so much. Um, so Vanessa, you are next. Okay. Hey everybody. I'm excited of the work that we we did over the year, this last year. I'm excited uh, for the way um, that we should be going forward with completing uh, some of the plans that we have. I also would like to see us get our logo, get a logo together. Um, just get more of the business part of, of the committee um, going uh, and established. Um, and if I'm willing to work in any of those other uh, initiatives that you guys, guys got going, just reach out and whatever I can do, I'm here. Thank you, Vanessa. You're um, welcome. Jim, Jim Vol, you're next. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my computer. Uh, I'm Jim Vol. 
Um, I am the CPED Community Planning and Economic Development Department of the City of, City of Minneapolis representative on the committee. Uh, I guess a goal for me, I don't know if it's for the whole group, but a goal for me and probably Kelly and some other people is to take the development criteria that you all developed and figure out ways to get that um, integrated into city processes and, and work plan and so forth. So, um, you know, to make sure that it's happening. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. Akia? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here. I'm glad to be a part of this new this new year, this team. And some goals I'm looking forward to are the impact that I have on the community and especially um, engaging the youth in some of these initiatives because um, climate change is happening and they're going to have to see the front of this. And I really, really want to see the impact and how the change will start up them as well. Awesome. Thank you, Ikea. Somebody uh, has the TV on. Would you mute your uh, mic until you, it's time for you to speak? Thanks, Vanessa. Anita, you're next. Oh, I think uh, for future, one of the goals is uh, we North Zone looks at more ways to engage other people in our communities, um, whether it's through somehow posting our Zoom meetings before we can meet together or um, getting communications out so that uh, people in North and Northeast Minneapolis know what's going on, especially um, as we come into the summer, month, spring months, I, I think with climate change, we can expect more storms, more water, more rain, and um, how we can get more people alerted to some of these changes and how they can um, protect themselves and their families and what to do in the event of serious uh, or catastrophic events, not just, you know, looking into the summer, but looking into the years ahead, which which goes along with the work that um, Roxanne's been doing with the youth. But I think um, we need to start involving all of our neighbors over here in North and Northeast Minneapolis. Thank you, That's Anita. Um, Anthony, you are on. Would you like to introduce yourself and share your goal for the year? Hey, everybody. I'm uh, Anthony Taylor. I'm with Neighborhood and Community Relations. Good to see everybody and be a part of this again for uh, another new year. Um, just one of my goals is, is to really just to continue the work that this group is doing. Um, welcome to new members. Um, I'm just excited about all the possibilities. So just a, a goal, behind, just an overreaching goal is to really continue to do the work um, that we've been doing and um, just reiterating how glad I am to be a part of this. So happy new year to everybody. Happy New Year, Anthony. Uh, Jackie. Hey, um, my goal, well, my personal goal gets to know everyone better um, since I'm a new member. And I guess a goal, I don't know if it's a 2021 goal I have for the group because I'm kind of coming in blind, but, um, or I'm kind of coming in without much knowledge of what you guys have been working on besides Kelly's little review. Um, but I'm interested in sort of environmental education, sort of place-based knowledge education. And I think it, this is a great group to do some stuff like that. Also, it's exciting to be part of a group of people that actually do something. So I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. Um, Michelle, you're up next. Hi, everyone. So
so um, yeah, a few goals are to be listening and learning and continue to work on edible boulevards, which you'll be hearing about in a little bit. And then also I would love to figure out how we can support some uh, plant-based businesses and initiatives that are going on in North Minneapolis. Um, so those are some of the goals I have. Thanks, Michelle. Roxanne? I already went, but yeah, I'm excited about doing this work with uh, with young people from Juxta on board and some other um, women that I know from the community, they're on board. And we're going to be doing some door knocking in some of the um, most stressful areas, the most stressful blocks in our communities and trying to reach out to families um, and just try to uh, engage folks around issues that they might be able to relate to more involving environmental justice. So emergency preparedness has been something I've been wanting to work on since 2013, since uh, I was with the city uh, on SEAC. And and yeah, just trying to get people prepared for, you know, if there's any sort of next, you know, chaos, which there could be. And so, trying to see if what if we can get some people some rental insurance out here get some people some equipments uh you know acs whatever we got to do to support people through climate chaos we're ready thanks Roxanne. lars um yeah um hi everybody happy new year um the thing i'm most there's a lot of things I'm hopeful for this year, but I think um, for the sake of this question, I'm I'm anticipating some progress we can make from a legislative point of view, considering there's been a change recently. And I feel like a lot of our environmental goals, whether it be, you know, some of the roadblocks we've had with local polluters like Northern Metals and GAF and everything, um, from a legislative point, like I'd like to see some more of our direct action to like senators and things like that. Um, That's awesome. It. Love it. Uh, Julie, are you on the call? Doesn't look like it. Uh, so, Andrew, you're next. Hi, guys. Uh, excited to be a part of the, uh, the meeting here and, and the task force in general. Uh, resident of Marshall Terrace neighborhood and Definitely excited about what Lars just mentioned with, um, with some of the actual uh, processes and, and legislation that we can maybe influence. I would love to be a facilitator in getting more people involved in uh, the goals and, and some of the, um, the actions or, you know, be well, the goals of the group in general, I've, you know, I've lived here for three years and wasn't aware that uh, the Green Zone Council existed until just end of last year when I applied. So I think there's probably more people out there like me that uh, would happily join or, or get involved if they knew it was something out there. So I look to be a, a facilitator in that regards. Thanks, Andrew. Next we have, oh, Marquita, and she just posted in the chat for me to read out. She's looking forward to find the intersections and in our varying initiatives in order to better support one another. Uh, she's got her room to the post office. Um, so after Marquita is Leslie. Leslie, are you still there? You're on mute. Might have to come back to Leslie. Uh, Joanne. Uh, 
Joanne might have stepped away as well. Uh, Michael, are you on the call? Can you hear me? Hello? Yep. Hello? Hey, Michael. Can you can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what's the question? What is your goal for 2021 for Northside Green Zone? Um, well, uh, the uh, goal of uh, for 2021 is, you know, folks have known my North Minneapolis is going green mantra. Uh, I finally uh, concluded it. It's like sweet potato vines, our missions and goals intertwine. And so um, what that translates into is really interfacing and uh, connecting the dots with larger initiatives and from that three four thousand dollars that went to create the uh tree farm on uh plymouth avenue and um and um fremont grew into a uh, initiative called the north side safety net where we garnered uh $140,000 in EPA grant, which garnered a $50,000 grant from, um, from um, a uh, Minneapolis foundation. And so now we'll have a cadre of young people who are going to work on the celestial gardens. And so all of these projects, um, it's a lot of the work has been embedded in a, a Kellogg foundation grant that is for uh, $1 million. And it's also being embedded into a, another, there's a, a Greater Minnesota Council of Churches has created a food systems think tank. And so they're taking much of the work that uh, we've been doing in North Minneapolis and some of the initiatives that we birthed and applying for a USDA grant. So really aligning a lot of initiatives and instead of us always working in isolation and separation, really being able to merge uh, and um, all of our efforts into a cohesive tsunami. Um, after about a year of working with Nikki and Congresswoman Ilhan's office, we've finally been able to begin and formulate a uh, new Green New Deal task force. And so we're going to have our first meeting in the middle of January, and that's going to be led by Congresswoman Ilhan and uh, U.S. Uh, Minnesota Representative Frank Hornstein. And so a lot of the work that we're doing in the Green Zone Task Force, I hope to mobilize, uh, amplify on the state level and on the national level. And it all started from $3,000 on that gravel bed tree farm. Congratulations, Mike, on your $50,000 grant. Thank you. Yes, awesome. Lots of work going on there. Um, and Chavez, I think you're back just in time. We're doing um, our introductions are around what is your goal for Northside Green Zone in 2021? Oh, hey, how we doing? Oh, did did ever did, does everyone know who I am first before we start? No, did I not I meant to do that before I left. Well, oh. hey, guys, I'm Chavez. I'm a high school student. If I didn't introduce myself, introduce myself before, how you doing? Sorry to have my camera. It's kind of. Is it Chavez? Yeah, Chavez. Let us see you, please. Huh? Oh, uh, let me get some lighting in here first. My room is like super dark. Wow. There we go. Is it still dark? Like, like my room has just been dark. I don't turn my light on because I hate like wasting power because I hate having lights in general. So, I usually just use sunlight. Plus, my camera is messy. We can see you. We can see you. Oh, yes. Well, hey everybody, how you guys doing? Hopefully great. Yeah. Alrighty. Let's see. My goals for the 20, 2021 year. Hmm. I don't, mm, I don't really know. Mm. 
This might be how I'm, hmm. I'm gonna have to say this in the next round. I can't think of a certain god is gonna set you. No hmm. worries. As you think of it, pop in and let yeah. us know. Hopefully I think of it as I'm going. <laughs> No, I mean, I'll probably set, like, four or five goals and get, like, four of them done. Four out of five. Make sure I get everything completed. Awesome. Well, it's great to have Kelly, you. Kelly, who is that talking? That's Chavez. Kelly, who is that talking? Who? Chavez. He's one of our new members. Hello. Okay. Hello. Great. Uh, next, it looks like Leslie. Leslie, you're back in. Yes, I am. I was having problems. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so thank you for having me in this group. I'm sat in meetings and just super geeked again. Um, as always. So my goals and the things I want to see or try to work on, I agree with as far as different changes in the policies. Also, I'm intrigued about those 125 um, that grandfathers that are not that are self-contained or whatever re regulating themselves and doing their own storm water management and things like that i'm just curious about that and how much contribute that they're doing into our environment over in the north side and as far as contributing to the air besides the northern metal because it's not just the northern metals and hurt there's other elements too and i'm just interested in um in that aspect to see is how much lead and contaminants that is the um, environment over there. So that's my thing um, that I'm interested in. And, and that's all. Happy New Year and peace and blessings to each and every one of you. And may God continue to bless you in your life. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Leslie. Joanne, are you back with us? Okay, I'm back. Um, so we, had, so we, we had customers show up. What a thing. Um, I'm Joanne, and my goals for 2021 are um, to work towards increasing fossil fuels and increasing renewable energy, especially um, getting solar panels to uh, low and middle income people. So there we go. That's Thank me. you. And last but certainly not least, Yolanda. Hi, yes. Um, Happy New Year again, everyone. I'm Yolanda Adams Lee. Um, um, one of the goals that I am interested in and to, to um, continue the work or um, use um, kind of as a spinoff launching pad from food equity and um, the farming and clean water, um, working with um, an a the University of Minnesota to write a curriculum for um, preschool to, um, I guess, toddlers to preschool age children to learn about what is environmental health, food equity, and clean drinking water, and to include that curriculum, partner with um, um, some of the Well Baby and um, health agencies as and place that curriculum. They provide books and um, information for toddlers and um, preschool children to provide that curriculum in kind of a cartoon or um, superhero type of way, um, and then um, have the hands-on um, farming and or food equity water um, process or projects for the children, um, both in Head Start as well as Scattered housing and partner with some of the housing shelters and housing um, organizations to get the information about green zones and the green zone project to a wider bandwidth. Thank you. 
Thank you, Yolanda. Did I miss anyone? Can I say this to Yolanda? And um, Yolanda, the DNR has a water festival. They have it over at the state fair. And they have grade school children there, but they're only for suburb kids. And they teach them about the elements of water and different games and things. Well, maybe another um, resource for you to reach out with the DNR. Oh, thank you. That'd be marvelous. Yeah, I got stuff with them over there. Okay. I, I didn't interrupt you. Sorry for that information. <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody. We look forward to working and um, um, supporting and getting the goals that we've um, talked about in progress or completion. Next is the discussion of uh, the Northern Green Zones uh, Connected Communities Draft Plan, the draft letter for James Staples. Sure, it's not uh, Jamez. Hi everybody, how you guys doing? I mean, I'm sorry, Jamez. I'm sorry, I messed her name up again. It's okay. I'm sorry. I accept it now. I, I expect it from you now. We'll just say that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so basically, this is a proposal, uh, federal funding opportunity from the Department of Energy. What this will do as we are um, actively pursuing our, um, actually moving forward with the training center, as well as some other developments along Plymouth Avenue, what we're seeking to do is utilize some resources from the feds for the purposes of uh, grid, grid interactive services, which will ultimately connect the buildings and utilize the energy more efficiency. So this is a federal funding opportunity that will help to actually do that. We will utilize electric vehicle charging stations. There's three federal departments that are associated, I'm sorry, I'm sorry three offices internal to the Department of Energy that will actively support this, which would be the uh, distributed energy resources Solar, the Office of Solar Technology and uh, Electric Vehicles, the area that kind of oversees the electric vehicles. And so what we want to do is, is utilize this as a, take this letter as a, um, basically it's a concept paper, which is just to see if we can even, uh, if we're encouraged to apply. And uh, we want to see if we can get past that stage. And then basically, if we do, then we'll come back to you all, have a conversation about how the green zones can actually engage and play an active role and doing some of possibly some of the community engagement as well as helping more people understand about what it is that we have the ability to do if we were awarded these resources and then from there what we can uh, what we plan to do then is as uh, apply so this is just the first step of you know many down a federal uh, funding road we we're, um, we're in the process of going after a letter from the uh, promise zone also which helps to um, gives us some additional um, points for our federal grants. You know, we haven't really been all that successful in terms of uh, receiving federal funding. So we're just giving us, you know, taking a shot in the dark here. And, and really what it does is this will further support the training center and give more people from our community the access to understand what some of these programs, what, what some of these technologies actually are and how they fully function and how they can be deployed in our community opposed to just in the more wealthier communities. Thank you. In the agenda, there's a link you could click on and actually look at the draft letter. Mm -hmm. And Jamez, there's a question from Roxanne. Uh, what happened with the last letter of support that the Northside Green Zone wrote? We don't remember hearing the update on that. We haven't gotten any word back. Uh, the, when we submit uh, for federal funding opportunities to the uh, federal agency, it's kind of like a black hole. A lot of times you just never hear back. And that is just kind of the way that this administration has operated. I think that um, if I'm, I'm un, honestly, I'm unsure which which was we have applied uh, uh, numerous grants uh, to the feds. And I recall that I had to uh, that was I want to say back last October. Um, and if it was that one, we had I had to reach out to Ilhan Omar's office to find out if we even were still in the running for it, and we weren't. I think that was the Minorities in Energy grant from, from the Department of Energy. And I was informed, um, I want to say it was maybe August or something like that, I got a response back and they said we were not awarded. So if that was that one, that's the only one that I can recall specifically, but, you know, we're just kind of still shooting at it. The University of Minnesota is a partner on this grant, uh, another private sector partner called 75F. 
which is an, a company that uh, does a lot of the clean air in terms of like the, the more uh, technologically advanced uh, indoor heating, indoor, indoor heating and cooling systems. They're a Minnesota based company. And so they're also a partner on this grant also. Jamez, have you been to Ilhan's office to ask her for a letter of support for this one? I haven't been to the office. I actually um, have been talking with Nikki Lingate about it and um, not about this grant specifically, but we want to let him know once we're at the submission stage that we're still a couple months, couple months away from submission, um, knowing that you all uh, meet, um, you know, not all that often. I want to at least reach out now and get the process going with you all. And congratulations well, I would, on becoming a part of that team, um, Michael. Yeah, thank you. I would um, suggest that you even just reach out to them, just like you're coming to the um, Green Zone Task Force. I would suggest that you reach out to them and get a support letter even for this application. Yeah, and we will. I mean, like I said, I mean, we're, you know, there we've got a handful of grants that we're applying for and we're trying to uh, lend money wherever we can to get this training center stuff up, up off the ground and going. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, here Green Zones was meeting. It was something that I sent a, sent a note to Kelly to see if it was something that the, that the Green Zones would be interested in. And you all had a meeting this month. So I definitely reach out to Ilhan as well as uh, uh, Dean Phillips' office and other Congress people. Cool. Um, so for Michael and um, anyone that's on the phone who doesn't have them, um, the letter is basically three short paragraphs. Um, it says, you know, the Northside Green Zone writes to support this application. Um, and Jim, as I don't know what um, the project title is called, but we'll fill that in. Yeah, um, this is connected, the uh, connected communities grant, basically. What it is. Yep. The Northside Green Zone commits to be a collaborative partner. Um, the reason the Northside Green Zone exists uh, is to work on environmental justice overburden, and the Northside Green Zone supports a resilience hub in microgrid project, um, which includes the 1200 Plymouth Avenue North Workforce Training Center. Uh, because it meets, it fits through the goals and recommendations of the Northside Green Zone work plan. Um, so the Northside Green Zone is eager to play a role in this transformative project. Um, so if you all want to approve this letter tonight, um, we can make edits to it and take a vote and then send it off to Jamez for inclusion in the grant application. Yeah, and this also supports, and, and, and Kelly, we've talked about this just a little bit, but uh, some of the work in relation to resiliency that we want to see in our community, acknowledging the fact that when things happen, we're typically the last ones that are thought of. And, and that's another element of the training center that we seek to uh, bring to benefit to the community by way of the, uh, the resources, all the resources that we can compile together at once will further advance the mission of, of the training center to be in addition uh, to the training center, also a uh, uh, resilient center. Hey, Jamez, Alan Campbell here. Um, sure. Got a question, I know Excel is gonna be uh, talking later, but have you had any talks with Excel about uh, tie-ins and them doing training at the uh, Plymouth Avenue Training Center? This is exactly some of the conversations that are currently ongoing. We are having um, some very interesting conversations, which, which has been very um, encouraging, not with the people that you are talking with today, but with some other parties that are a little, uh, I would say, just higher up the food chain, for lack of better terminology, and they have expressed a substantial level of interest. Uh, these are ongoing conversations, so nothing can be necessarily promised at this point. However, um, you know, last conversation that I had with the people was very, very encouraging and they have uh, expressed a lot of interest beyond the, because you know, the relationship between Excel and I has been fairly hot and cold. So, I mean, that that's not, uh, that's not to be, uh, that's no secret. I feel like we've gotten to a better place. And so now um, we're at a point where we are, are amenable to both interests of me representing the community. And I know that everybody on this call doesn't know my work and what I'm doing, but 
I'm just trying to make it happen for everybody. So, and that's that's uh, that's that's the key is making sure that the young people as well as the adult community members have access to training and participating in the emerging sectors of the economy. That was good. Thanks. I have a question. So do we actually is need that, to edit anything? Okay. Do we actually need to edit the letter? Okay, you guys, we got several people asking questions at the same time. If you want to make a comment or have a question, will you go to chat and say comment or type your question in there so that we, people don't be over talking each other? So I'll, I, I can't see that. I, I don't see the chat on my box, but um, no, but, uh, Kelly or I, we will, we'll, we will see or either put your hand up, Kelly or I will, uh, we'll see it. Or one of the leaders will see it, and then we can call on you in that order. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Allen, you did you have a, a second question? Can't hear you, Miss Allen. No more questions. Thank you. Okay. Can you take your hand up down for me, please? Uh, if I can figure out how. Okay. okay. Roxanne, was that you that I heard? Roxanne? Yeah, that was me. Okay, Roxanne. Yes, that was me. Okay, it's on you. I was just wondering, I was ready to move uh, the letter of recommendation forward. I was just asking if there really, if it was necessary for us to edit it, or can we move now? I was going to ask that exact thing. I was going to ask for a motion and a second that we take the vote on the letter. But I uh, move. hold on, I see mine state 22. Got a hand up. Yes. Mine state 22 is me. Mm -hmm. Oh. Let's I'll put my hand it. down. Okay. But I'm, right. I'm moving it. I'm moving it, I guess. I'm moving. You're making a motion. Okay, there's been motion. Well, we need a second. I had a question and my hand is up. And you guys are making a motion. I just have a question for that young man. I'm for it, but I still want to know, will his, this proposal that we're signing off, is this including training for the people in the community? Are they going to learn more than what the benefits are for the solar panels? Are they going to be able to install them? Are they going to be able to re repair them? That's my question because, as um, Alan said, Excel Energy had came and wrote a and had a proposal that the north side um, had these solar panels put on their houses and only gave them thirty dollars a month, where the benefits weren't going to the homeowners. And so my question to you, which is a great idea, if that and it's a training center, are our community and these young people going to be trained more than just educating the values of it? That's the only thing I have because I'm new here. And that's I'm I'm for it, and you guys are moving on and being a new member, and I'm not trying to step my, out my boundary. I just want to know exactly the details of what I'm agreeing to. That's all. Totally understand. Um, so just to give you some context, a little bit more context here. Um, the training center is a project that's been in the works for I would say almost six, seven years, uh, and that's on the corner of Plymouth and Fremont, which is the former workforce center which I acquired specifically for the purposes of bringing training to the community, not just for people to know about it, but for more <coughs> so that people in our community can get to it because training is not accessible by way of our community. So it's two hours away by, by public transit one way. So the, the purpose of this, this, this grant will help to advance some of the technologies that can be deployed on site in our community along Plymouth Avenue, which is a bigger plan for Plymouth Avenue that will connect various buildings together so that people can understand what grid grid services are, what interactive grid services actually are. How is it that they tie, how is it that you utilize the um, vehicle charging stations during um, you charge, you use the solar panels to charge batteries, uh, and then you use that power, you store the power, you use it later. So those are some of the technologies that are currently being deployed on site. So there's so solar power on the building, which we just installed in September. There's battery storage that's going on that will be installed within the next, I want to say, month. We just got our final approval from the LCCMR in the University of Minnesota, in addition to microgrid controls. 
So those are three elements that will be deployed and will be utilized as training tools as a living laboratory for the facility <laughs> itself. In addition to electric, electric vehicle charging stations, a heat pump, which will put the gas utility on standby, as, and a complete stormwater retrofit, which is 85% done, which has already taken place on the building. Uh, if you anybody passed by and saw a bunch of equipment outside and a bunch of people outside working, so this grant will further take this take this this technology that we're deploying as a living laboratory and move it to the next level of how to utilize power in 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 the most efficient and innovative way. Right. So when you're when you're making the question about how is it that um, that the community will benefit, this project is all about community benefit. Um, it's all about making sure that we understand how these systems work, how they function, and how we get trained to actively go to work in these industries. Okay, one more question. Are you part with the U to get that training for our community? I'm a graduate of the U Environmental Science Policy and Management. My name is Leslie Jack. So I just curious about that, sir. I know I'm familiar with the, the area. I grew up there, watched the Plymouth. I watched the riot on Plymouth Avenue on Morgan Avenue. I watched the store burn right there on the corner in front of me. So I'm north, nothing but north side, born and raised here. So my question is get back. You know what I'm saying? And I can I applaud you for what you're doing. And I, I hope in the future what your goals is that you can educate our community so they can benefit in the longer term um, to do the solar panels in our community where it's beneficial for us, educational wise. Well, thank you for your time. And I, that's all I just wanted to know exactly what the details of what you're signing. And that that's all, no harm. No problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Kelly, Kelly, Anita, Kelly I'm gonna have to jump off of this call, but so uh, if you're gonna take a vote on on writing a letter of support, I'm uh, I'm going to say I support it, and I have to move to this other uh, Zoom call that I'm having. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. All bye, right. Bye. Have a good evening, everybody. Yeah, uh, happy New Year. Bye, bye. Anita, you're next. Okay. Um, a couple of things, Madam Chair. Point of order. A motion and a second doesn't necessarily mean you have to vote right then. Uh, usually it's a motion to open up the discussion, second, and then there's room for discussion. Just so that new members or anybody who's unfamiliar with that process, it's called Robert's Rules. Um, that's just my point of order. We can have that discussion. It doesn't mean that if somebody seconds, you have to vote right away. The question that I have uh, is for Jamez, uh, um, seeing that this is January 2021, beginning of a new year, it's likely that you will be applying for more grants. Is that right? This is, this is very true. This okay, is very okay. true, yes. So my question then to um, my peers on the Green Zone is, we can either have uh, Mr. Jamez bring letters a recommendation every time he wants to apply for a grant, or we can give him an open that lets him use this wording and lets him use this letter anytime he applies for a grant. So giving him an open pass, so to speak, to have an open letter from us to use anytime he applies for a grant. So that's would he be reporting back? Would he be I'm reporting happy. back to us? I'd be of happy course. to report. I would be happy to report any time that we are supplying uh, writing a letter uh, with saying we have green zone support, and and, and that just at least pro provided to you all. Yes, I mean that would. Thank you, Anita. I appreciate that that gesture. Yes, that's that would be ideal because we are going to be going after a lot of grants. And, and you're looking at timelines a lot of times. If you just find a grant and then the grant is due in three days, that gives you little time to get back with the board to meet again, group to meet again and say, can you know, can I get a letter of recommendation? So I'm trying to alleviate some of that problem for you, Mr. Jamez. So um, I'm putting it out to the Green Zone members. We have a, a motion. We don't have a second, so we have an open opportunity for a new motion 
because our first motion hasn't gone anywhere yet. We have an opportunity for a new motion to um, allow demands to use this letter, the wording on it, as an open letter for the year 2021 when he applies for grants. I think we need to know what grant and what when he's using that letter. Because it could be something that, that he applied for that does not fall under what Green Zone is about. So I, I don't give I don't have a problem with him having a letter, but I, before he send a letter all saying that is from us, we need to know that he's going to be sending that letter before he does it. Uh, and I agree with you, Vanessa. Would it be fair to ask, I mean, the chair and possibly the uh, city person to be, if, if those two, you two, Vanessa and Kelly, can at least see if it fits within the the wheelhouse of the green zone and, and the, the board approve for that, you all, you two to make that decision? You can ask us on what we can do to shoot an email to members to get a reply back a yeah or nay and then we'll give you the okay yay send it nay and don't send it how about that that's fair so uh, I can mend that then anita we yeah. can't do Actually, there's we can't do votes by email unfortunately so we wouldn't be able to we it would oh, yeah if you right. want to do an open letter yeah so what you can do is if you see or know that this month you're applying for this, you could prior to our meeting date, let us know and we can say yay, yay or nay. We, but we don't want to give you the, the power to just any grant you go at to just automatically attach a letter from us. We need to be aware of what, of what it's going to, what it's for. I, I'm sorry, Jamez. I, I guess because I worked with you, been working with you for about three, four years that I have implicit trust in, in the kind of work that you're looking to do and right. um, what your ideals and goals are for North Minneapolis. Right. But um, if others have a problem with it, then I, I'm going to uh, then remove my request. I'm not, say I'm not saying we don't trust you, Jermaine, <laughs> but it's Business is business, and we need to know what we're being attached to or represented on. That's all. I, you can have an open letter. We just need to know when it's going to be used. Okay. All right. So, so does Anita's um, motion stand, and then I, I inform you all that this is what we're going for? And you, there's another hand up also. Okay, Ms. Jackie. I have maybe a silly question, but is a letter of support, does that just mean like we support this idea or does that mean that we're attaching ourselves to the project? The letter of supports are currently going after out to support the, the initiative around making sure that there's access to training as well. Typically what we're applying for, I, you have, Bear with me for a second. I'm trying to get my charger out and get it connected. Um, what we are doing here is we are trying to make sure that the north side community does not get left behind and that we are making sure that we are active participants on all levels. You have to see me. I'm in, a, in the dark here now, but it's OK. Um, um, sorry, I could probably answer that better now that I got power. <laughs> Um, it's only you were connected to a grid. Because <laughs> I'm connected to the grid. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, and my battery storage ran out. There you go. Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question now that I've gotten that seat? Because I was on one percent. So. Oh yeah. Um, I just I don't really understand what a letter of support entails for us. Um, is it just saying that we support this idea, or is it? to doing work with you in the future yes. it's actually yeah. it's actually a little bit of both right it's it's that you support the idea the the, the opportunity for funding that we're pursuing that the end so that's that's one piece and the other yeah. piece what we are active with what my work is, is is essentially focused around is making sure that north minneapolis has active participation 
through the uh, through the training center to become uh, more acclimated to the emerging sectors of the economy of clean energy, sustainability, and uh, uh, um, all these other emerging sectors that, that we want to be a part of to make sure that our youth and adults have access to. So it's, it's a twofold. And so that's kind of why I think that uh, Anita was raising the issue around the idea of an open letter, because anybody who knows me knows I'm born and bred North Side. I'm all about the North Side, and I'm trying to make it happen, not just for me, but for everybody who's affiliated with um, uh, the North Side. Okay, thank you for answering. And then I just wanted to say that I would trust Kelly and all the chair's judgment if we wanted to do an open letter that's based upon their approval, and then as long as we're all informed of what's going on, yeah, that was my idea. Yeah, and I'm happy to provide any grants that we that we plan to pursue. I'm willing to provide a brief sense, a brief um, write up of what it is, or even as well as a link to the grant to the Green Zone group. I can provide that to Kelly or to the chair, and you all can you know just share that amongst each other. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussions or questions? Vanessa, we have some questions from Yolanda in the chat. Um, okay. So, Yolanda, do you want to just raise your question? It's not a question. It's it's um, the process, and I think that um, Anita spoke to the fact that she knows J Jamez, and I know Jamez. However. I think the process um, should be the same for everyone that comes to um, the um, council, the, to the committee, requesting um, a letter of support. Um, we, I don't think we should um, provide, if, if we're going to provide an open letter for Jamez and his project, and then have folks to have him to come back and advise us, then that should be the process for everyone. We've had others who've come to the table and required a, a, asked or requested for an open letter, not an open letter, but a letter of support. And I just I, I just feel like it's um, going in a direction that doesn't seem to be equitable to everyone. That's my, my, um, my input. Well, it sounds like it needs to be a vote taken. So, yeah, move forward with the individual letter and we can continue discussion. Open letters. Okay. Can I say something about the open letter? I agree with everybody. It should come back up because he might change the wordage on the proposal and things like that. And not saying that it that you won't um, inform us, but at the same time, there might be modifications to what you originally had started off for our support. And we should do it through a review and a process. I agree with Ms. Willis. So I could move to accept this letter of support and then we can talk about an open letter at another time. Who is that, Ms. Jackie? Yes. It's my first motion. <laughs> Good. Okay, so now we got three different motions. We got three different motions on the floor. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. We have, we have no motions. We have no motions. None of them have been seconded. I heard you make it before you, Anita. There was a start of a motion. Then you you came in and changed it to be an open letter. And now Miss Jackie is making an open. That's three different times I've heard an attempt to an uh, uh, Somebody else did. Um, I, 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 I made a motion okay. first. Okay. I'm going to call order here. I'm calling order. Order. It's too many people talking. You have to follow protocol. Put your hand up if you got a statement, a comment, or a question. Now, I just stated we had 
three different people are tempered motion that we haven't got a second to move forward. I want to move forward on this thing. So I now hold on. I see Andrew Hanna. Andrew, you got the time. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I second the motion to approve of the initial letter and to bring up uh, an open letter in the future. OK, and is that an open letter for Jamas alone or we have a, our own open letter ready to put in whoever needs one from us? The second to Jackie's request or to Jackie's motion, which I believe was open letter concept in the future. OK, discussed in open letters in the future. So I have a, a, a motion and a second. Can we have roll call vote, Ms. Kelly? So the motion is to send the initial letter that we have now and look at having open letters in the future. Yes, so, any discussion before I call roll? I don't get it. I, I'm sorry. I don't understand the Jackie motion. Um, I, I I really don't get that. So um, I I I don't understand the word it's in there. I'm sorry, and I'm not okay. trying to steal anything. But at the same time, uh, Miss Roxanne motion that was gone. Okay. So hey, I, I'm just gonna shut up. Miss Jackson. Miss Jackson. Miss Jackson. Yeah. Have you read the letter? No, I'm having problems with my phone. And I'm nope, just saying no. about the motion that's on the floor. And so when you call my name, I'll have my vote. Okay, so there you go. Okay, but I'm saying to you, the, the letter itself is in the agenda. If you're looking at the agenda, just punch on that uh, uh, a link there and you can actually see the letter, the wording. And Miss Kelly did read the letter to us. I don't know if you heard what the content of that letter was. So we're well we're what what has been motion second now is the letter that Miss Kelly read. We're voting for that letter to be uh used now by Mr. Jamez and that we will discuss an open letter in the future. So Miss Kelly can you all right. I get the first part. It's just the second part that that was said. So I don't understand if we're going to discuss him being able to have an open letter in the future or all open letters. That's the confusing part to me. So um, he read it all together and I don't do one on. So I know how to vote. OK, so it is messed up words to me and maybe I'm an alien. Hey. Oh, my God. Miss Jackson, please let's stay, let's keep order and let's keep the right attitudes on, in this meeting. So, what the, the the discussion part would be for an open letter at a later date? That's all. We're going to discuss it at a later date. Okay. So I see yeah. Mr. Andrew. I see Mr. Andrew hand up, and I see Miss Jackie hand up again. Let's do the, um, you guys quickly make your statements or questions and then we'll move to the vote all right this is just clarification we're the 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 wording that we're choosing is to support this initial letter and discuss an open letter in the future i yes. just meant i just meant discuss like what type of protocol we would want to set up in order to approve an open letter in the future um but also i'm sorry i didn't mean to override Roxanne's motion either. I just want to say we approve and move on. <laughs> really. OK, and with that, I don't see any other hands up. Do you, Miss Kelly? If not, then we'll go for the vote. Roll call, please. Great. Yolanda, do you approve or deny? I approve. Thank you. Chaz? I approve. Joanne? I approve.
Is it on me? Yep. I approve. I approve. Andrew. Approve. I approve. Did you say my name? Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't know connection. Okay. Yeah, I'm having bad. I can't hear anybody's name being called, but yes, I approve. I think you said me, Michelle, so I approve. Thank you. Jackie? I approve. Anita? Who'd you say? Anita? Yes. Akia? I approve. Vanessa? Yes. And Did you say Georgian? Yep. I approve. All right, that is so, that motion carries and the letter is approved. Was that a unanimous vote? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you guys. Appreciate the letter. You're welcome anytime. Um, next is, uh, is a presentation and I'm running out of energy. <laughs> Out of here. Oh, it's not Anita, Roxanne, y'all got it. Did she leave? Oh, you. Oh, you're still here. I'm sorry. Did you? I'm just saying that my juice on my phone is going down. I'm less than 12 percent. So if I die, I'll try to log in on my come back in on my computer, but. Just give me all a heads up. Okay. I'm going to turn my video off to save uh, power. Okay, Roxanne, I can take I can't, over. I can't see what. Yeah, thank you, Anita. Okay. Um, and Kelly, are we ready for our presentation from Excel Energy? Yes, yes, that's what I was telling you. Okay. All right. We're expecting uh, Bridget Doctor from Excel Energy to give a presentation. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Bridget. Oh. Hi. Hi. Um, thanks for hearing us tonight. We have a we have a few folks here in case there are other questions, but um, Bria Shea and myself will be doing the the primary. Um, portion of this and we have it set up that we'll get through the content in about 10 minutes and then we have um, like another 20 minutes set aside for uh, any to answer any questions that you have. Um, and then Sarah, would you be able to pull up the PowerPoint, please? And then can you put it in? So we're going to be talking about, uh, and I'll have Bria start here in just a moment, but we're going to be talking about uh, the non-wires alternative uh, resiliency project. When we were with you the last time, um, we talked about the overall relief and recovery project um, and some of the proposals that we had put forth. And this is a specific one in Minneapolis that we wanted to um, get feedback from you. When we talked about this initially um, and Bria gave a, a, a kind of an overview on it, um, we heard feedback from you that you really wanted to be a part of um, helping to decide where some something like this might go and um, dis 
by helping to decide what is important to you as a community. And so we're looking to get feedback from both the north side and the south side green zones to help us identify sites. Um, and then we'll we'll work those down to potential um, project or projects and um, for uh, potential implementation within the community. So with that, uh, Bria, would you please start us out? Sure. Um, so Sarah, yeah, I think Bridget kind of walked through that here and in the interest of time, um, let's go to the, um, the next slide there, Sarah. There we go. Um, so as you, some of you might recall, I, I was here um, a little while back and I did talk a little bit about our relief and recovery plan. So just to give a little background there, the commission, the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission issued a notice earlier this year asking all utilities to submit investments um, that can help the economy recover from COVID. And so in that effort, we proposed a wide variety of investments that <clears throat> ranged from a large wind project, solar, um, grid investments, and a group of electric vehicle investments. In addition, we proposed uh, um, an investment on the distribution grid, that, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, specifically, it's called the Non-Wires Alternative Project, and I'll get into this a little bit more in the next slide. Um, but at a high level, a non-wires alternative is basically a system investment or operating practices that could defer or even replace a need for a traditional grid investment. And so we're still in the early stages of this development, as Bridget uh, indicated, but we've got a budget in the four to eight million dollar range. And we know at this point that we'd like to focus it on resiliency after conversations with um, with people throughout the city. Um, and so we're currently working with uh, a variety of folks to build a pilot project located within the city. And we've got um, some technologies we're looking at, including solar, electric vehicle charging, battery storage, uh, demand response, and even energy efficiency. And so our hope is that Excel can get some learnings out of the project by seeing the impact on the grid and uh, you know how we manage the grid. And hopefully the community will benefit by the increased resilience as well as local job creation and uh, just investment in the community in general. And so once we go th through this process, through a series of uh, inputs and meetings um, with various parties, we'll narrow down the project scope, the location or locations, and the technology ultimately. And then we at Excel will work to submit a filing to the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission uh, who will ultimately need to approve the project to move forward. And so, Sarah, if you go to the next slide. <clears throat> so I've been calling it a non-wires pilot, which is NWA is the um, industry term for that, which I stated before is a non-traditional approach to grid investments when there is an investment need that's been identified due to system issues. However, in this case, as the project has evolved, the proposed project is not really being made due to a system need, but rather an opportunity for improved local resiliency and, like I said, job creation and community investments. And so at this point, it really does feel like it's more appropriately called a community resiliency initiative. And so you're probably wondering what is resiliency um, in, in the electricity system world? And so you probably are familiar with the term reliability and that's generally something people would associate with electric service and really it's keeping the lights on. Resiliency is a, a little bit uh, more nuanced and really a, a, um, has evolved in the last few years, but it's really a specific focus on actions or investments that can make the electric system less susceptible to disruptions or to help it recover more quickly after an event or a disturbance. And so that's really what resilience is. It's, it's the ability to recover quickly um, from an event or grid hardening. And so when you think about resiliency, we traditionally look to key facilities and critical, critical infrastructure um, as sites and locations that you would want protected, that you would want to bounce back in the, uh, in the um, in, in the case of an event. And so that's what we're really looking for. What would benefit most from uh, a resiliency investment? And so I think with that, I'll turn it over to Bridget to get into the discussion about the potential 
uh, sites and locations for this for this potential investment. Thanks, Bria. Um, before we move on, are there any questions right now? Okay. I got, so, um, I, I got because you keep talking about jobs and and resilience and things like it like that. So basically, you're sugarcoating a whole lot of things. But with these jobs, are you really to train our community? You're talking about solar panels and putting up different elements for electric cars that our community so-called cannot afford. Are you talking about putting these things in the black community of North Minneapolis to utilize people that don't own these cars? That's, you know, just throwing these words out like they're, like it's, like it's going to sugar us and, and make us good. So I'm going to continue with the, uh, the presentation, but these are questions that are in my head as you speak. Uh, Bria, I don't know if you wanted to touch on that, but there a couple of things, and thanks for the question on that. So a couple of things, um, uh, for example, Jamez had referenced his training site, which has different elements included in that. One of them includes the uh, training on the um, EV infrastructure and um, uh, uh, implementation of that it includes solar training um, and and other things. We have be besides this initiative, one of the other initiatives that we had proposed um, in the relief and recovery plan was a $4 million workforce development project that we're also in the midst of working on. And Jamez also referenced that in his discussions. We had talked to him about that. Um, we've been talking to a lot of folks within the community and we had discussed that a bit in the last um, meeting as well. Um, and we've been continuing those discussions and talking or talking to folks and looking for what should really be included in this RFP as we move forward. And um, one of the things that we would like to be able to do with it is utilize folks that have been trained through the training program for installation of this whatever is chosen for a non-wires alternative and or a resiliency project and it one of the things we're looking for from from you all is to be able to provide us feedback on what's uh, an important structure or an important type of um, resiliency project to you and you know what I'm hearing is um like ev infrastructure is not important so what what other types could maybe be and you know is it things like potentially um solar plus storage things that could be used as backup and um as i go through the rest of the presentation i'll talk through what are some potential sites to consider um but we want to talk about what what is important to you and what are things that we should be looking for um, when we're looking for a location for this type of a project? And, you know, depending on where the project is, um, what type of project it is, it'll, it'll depend on whether it's, you know, one project or multiple projects and you know, whether it'll be in the north side or the south side, that's all dependent upon, you know, factors of um, technological and, you know, what do what do rooftops look like? You know, a, a lot of other factors included in there, but we really want that feedback from you of, um, you know, what sites are important to you as a community and what types of things are important to you as a community when it comes to, um, your energy resiliency. So um, do you, I don't know if you want to go to questions now or if it would be okay for me to finish the last couple of slides and then we do the rest of the questions. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? You have some hands up. Hold on. Um, Leslie? 
um, yes. to pick up what you said, um, Bridget, I was in that meeting and I listened to the proposal of putting solar panels over North Minneapolis on our homes for $30 a month and the homeowner would not benefit. I also am aware um, um, that those solar panels can have defaults or things and people have to come back and forth in people's yards to be a nuisance, especially if they're not benefiting from it. And my thing with, with Mr. Jazz is I asked him, what training would it be? So you're spreading the knowledge of solar panels, but you're not educating. And then at the same time, when we did have that discussion with you, you didn't say there would be no training or no employment for those in that community, but you want to put things there, but then you say there's no need, but you're not making us self-sufficient economically and financially to benefit from the utility bills and the rising costs, and now we're, the community is affected even more, not only from the crime, but from COVID, and a lot of people can't afford to pay things. So we're having a pandemic financially and economically as well as utility wise with your company. Thank God that you are a central worker, you know, but my thing with that is, is that everybody sugarcoats everything, but nobody wants to give back. You make promises and make it sound good, but then we're still not benefiting. What, benefit, what buildings are important? Everyone that has a household over North Minneapolis is important. Every household over there. I was downtown and her puts the steam to apartment buildings that not really can, you know, people pay their taxes, but it's not benefiting North Minneapolis who are getting condemned for the pollution in their mental health and their health and welfare. But I'll let you finish your your presentation and my stance as an environmentalist and getting my degree from the university for policy management and the environment. I, 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 I know it's a need in our community for us to be self-sufficient. And if Excel is benefiting from our payments to keep our lights on, but then you want to put things there, benefit more to help educate us so we can be profitable in more ways. With with in installing solar panels in this this installing the the signs and things for people to put their electric cars in our community educate us so we can benefit don't sugarcoat to us you know it's a whole new change of things as you've seen on the news yesterday it's a whole new change in our society of educated people that are tired of being suppressed not from just white supremacists but from others in our community those do-gooders that keep us suppressed that offer kibbles and bits and the crumbs that cockroaches pass up so don't do us like that come to us and talk to us and don't with all these colorful presentations talk to us as we're human and educated talk to us as we care about where we live and we do want these things but we want to be able to be self-sufficient to be able to operate them and that's all i have to say okay thank you miss leslie roxanne roxanne you got your hand up okay thank you Thank Anybody you. else? Thank you, Anita. I, oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you, Anita. I was. My first question is, uh, why aren't you already working and investing in Jamesa's um, resiliency hub on Plymouth? And can we get a commitment from you to um, to do that? Since you guys have the power and the resources to do that. And my second question is, is why is the dollar amount so low? Um, we're getting scraps here and that's historic. I think for me, I need Excel to step it up and really put their money where their, where their mouths are in terms of resiliency and equity. So when we look at the billions of dollars that you guys are talking about investing, um, and you look at the amount of people of color in our community, the dollars aren't equitable. So if we are faced with um, higher COVID-19 death rates, then the money needs to be um, allocated in a way that reflects that urgency. So what are you guys willing to do to make the money, money more? And then 
how are you going to work with Jamez as one of our leaders in the community who are is trying to do these same ideas? And and I'm and I'm like I'm with Leslie and on you know we just don't want any jobs. We want careers. And so training is very important. If we're not the ones out here building this stuff, we don't want to be a part of it. Like we don't need more people who don't look like us coming into our communities benefiting off of all these dollars. If you really want to do something that's equitable, invest. Invest in us and invest in every part of us. So I would just like those two questions answered if possible, ma'am. I, I, I'll I start with the, the Jamez piece and we have met with Jamez. What we'll be doing is bidding out the $4 million for the workforce development. There are a lot of organizations, not just Jamez, but there are a lot of organizations that do really great work. Um, some of them you brought up during the last meeting, one of them was Summit Academy and um they do great work as oh, well no, i didn't bring up no i didn't i didn't bring up summit academy at all actually i brought up to summit academy about this uh years ago in 2013 and i was told by the, the by the executive director that there was no money in this work and maybe that's because at the time he was more focused on um i don't know electrician stuff i'm not quite sure but um, or, or I can't remember exactly what he was more focused on, but I was well, told that um, it really wasn't a good idea. But we well, did I don't bring know. up Jamez, and I did bring up those those resiliency hubs about being able to, like, if the grid were to fail, how could we, how could people, you know, connect to something um, that was powered by solar? Well, and this. Well, let me this Dr. Benes, excuse me. We support him, and he is North Side. He grew up North Side. He sees our vision. He's a property owner trying to make a difference, and we support him. And to give back to our community is exactly what he's doing, and that's what what we expect you to do, especially when you want to come in. So if you can't support what we support and believe in, to me. I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm only one person. And what I see what you're doing is not right. What I see what you're doing is ignoring the bigger picture for our future. For our future, my future, your future. Because it's not just over north side, south side. It's Minneapolis and we're all connected. And that young man is doing something to give back to our community, to our youth. Where you said there's other organizations, there is, but not over north, not not growing up in Minneapolis, not being a steward to our community. And he speaks for our community to give back to our youth, which, as you see on the news, is getting shot by the police, which you see is drive by. So you can help okay. or whatever, but at the same time, can I, I can get her to, can I get her to answer that question, please? Which question? I don't know which question at this I point. I asked two questions. I put them. I put them in the chat as well. The money and um and why aren't you working with Jamez as of now? So the the first question I did answer of why are we not working with Jamez right now is well, there's twofold. We have worked with Jamez over the years, and um, we had invested some with Jamez. We have given him letters of support before. And uh, right now, I said he was one of the parties that we discussed this $4 million workforce development initiative that's part of the relief and recovery plan that is still under review with the Public Utilities Commission. And then the second question of why is the dollar amount so low when the communities face the worst COVID-19 death rates? Um, and and I, I don't know wh which dollar amount specifically you're talking about, but. Um, so you guys are investing billions of dollars, correct? We're investing billions of dollars in the system itself to make it greener. And that system itself is reflective of what's what's put out with the within the entire state. So when you look at the entire state, and we're talking about COVID-19 do dollars. And then you're looking at the communities that are facing uh, the worst COVID-19 rates, which means we're also facing, which means we're also essential. A lot of us are essential workers. 
So we will be exposed a lot as well as be, we're going to have trouble with, um, with, um, we're going to have trouble with people staying in, in, in employment. So what I'm saying is, when you see that we're we're facing the worst of the worst, how now are you going to change the dollar amounts that you are investing to match, to be equitable to what is actually more urgent, you know, to prioritize those who need it the most? Well, I, I mean, honestly, I don't think I'm the one to be able to answer that for the company. Yeah. Well, can and you get I, back to us with an answer? Because I asked this, I asked this question last time, and what, actually, I'm a part of another group that's been asking this question. We we came to have we have a proposal here in front to get feedback based upon our conversation last time, and that is what we are here to do. I what this this four to eight million dollars is is Excel Energy's um, contributions here to the city that, again, we'll need to go through the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission. Um, there, This is not our only investment in the city or the community. We've got, I think, nearly $100 million in other efforts that are directly um, benefiting uh, these communities. And so we're just here to discuss this one distinct, unique proposal. I think I can't, for me, I can't, honestly, I can't support you guys right now because um, right now we don't see what you're investing in and you're just kind of giving us words. We don't have anything in, in like written down in stone. And this is a very small project. This $4 million is not enough. Um, I would just suggest that you come go back to the table with Excel and you tell them that it's not good enough for our community and we want better. I know that there's um, all these dockets in front of the PUC right now, um, but that was based on what you guys wrote for proposals. So it's not just based on PUC, it's based on what you proposed. And so you need to propose something better. That's from me, that I don't speak for the whole Green Zone group. But you guys come back with a better plan. Based on Based on Roxanne's and Leslie's comments, what is the overall reaction of the group? Do you want to finish the presentation or would we like to ask our presenters to go back to their bosses, management and give them the feedback? Because I, I you know, the thing is, if they're coming here for feedback, then they've, they've got a lot so far. And the feedback is more investment that I'm hearing more investment in North Minneapolis. So um, I'm just going to take a real quick, everybody can answer yes, no, or if they have anything else to respond to. Do you want to finish the presentation or should we ask our presenters to go back and come back again with some of the answers to the questions and concerns that are raised? Anybody? Yes. If you're responding, could you say your name first so that we know who's talking? This is Jackie. Okay. I think they need to go back to the drawing board a little bit. And then also, I just wanted to say, um, since we're focusing on job creation, I would like to see Excel have a plan to ensure that uh, the workforce is not devalued as they start to hire more north side residents. So that way they not only are they hiring them, but they're hiring them for good jobs that will be stable careers like Roxanne and Leslie were saying. OK, thanks, Jackie. Anybody else? Yeah, this is Michelle. It sounds like some of these questions have been asked prior to tonight. And so to have these questions answered and to have those um, finances increased, not finances, but investment increased, if this is really important to Excel, definitely needs to happen before we have this conversation. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Anybody else? Okay. 
then um, I would say to our presenters, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, but we're, as the community has spoken and the people here have spoken, we're going to ask you to go back, as Jackie put it, or Michelle put it, go, one of the two, put it back, uh, put it back on the table and rework it. Talk to whomever you need to talk to at Excel, express our concerns that were brought to you tonight. And um, when you're ready to come back with the, some of the answers to the questions that were asked, let Kelly know. And we'll talk to you again. And, and answer the questions that have been raised tonight. I really sincerely hope that you do come back to this group. Um, what you've heard tonight is true community. Um, there's no, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, no whitewashing. It's, it's not acceptable. We don't want to be told what's going to happen. We want to be engaged in what's happening. And by engaging us in what is happening, these questions have to be answered. And so um, you've heard from the community members tonight. So again, I thank you for coming and we're going to ask you to contact Kelly when you've got these questions answered. And if you need more clarification, connect with Kelly. She'll connect with us if you'd like more clarification. And I, and I hope you do uh, are really very clear on um, what we're looking for from you. So, well, thank you. Um, I, I appreciate the, the, the feedback. I wish we would have gotten the opportunity to talk about the resiliency um, piece of it that we were asking for the feedback on, but perhaps another time. Yes. All right, thank you. And like I said, I encourage you to get in touch with Kelly and, and come back and then give us that resiliency, but come back with some with some responses to the questions. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be um, the same acceptance if if those answers or those questions are not, are not answered. We're going to then ask you to come back again until you do. OK, great. Thank, Thank you, you all. Much. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Kelly, are you still with us? Yes, I am still here. OK, do we have the Edible Boulevard Gardens pilot update? We do, but I want to note that it is 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, so we might have to hold that um, to allow it to have sufficient time for our February meeting. I don't want to rush Michelle's update and the discussion on that. OK. Michelle, how does that sound? Well, it, I wonder if I can either like send out something to people and see if anybody would be yeah. interested in um, in joining because you know one of the things I'm looking for is having people join in on the planning of edible boulevards for this coming year. And um, the sooner that happens, the better. And um, and we're also working. I'm working on it, writing a grant with Michael Cheney and Spark Y right now. And so, uh, so anyway, I just thought if I could send something out to people prior to February, that would be really helpful to, you know, try and get get some people on board. So would that work? Um, I think it would, Michelle. Mm -hmm. I think that would work. And then we'll put you on the agenda for the February meeting. OK, sounds good. OK, yeah, so, so sure Michelle, go ahead and go ahead and send agenda. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and we can do the financial report uh, next time, too, if we want to have a conversation around that. But um, for folks who have seen the agenda, there is a link there. So you can see the remaining um, dollars left is about uh, 6,000. OK, thank you, Kelly. Any other? Well, we're looking we're a little past our time, so any other um, anybody want to say anything before we adjourn? 
I see it. Vanessa has her hand raised. Oh, Vanessa. Oh, you're on mute, Vanessa. Vanessa, you need to unmute yourself. Can't do it. I don't think I. If you can't unmute yourself, Miss Vanessa, can you take your hand down if you want to um, hold that conversation, or if you want to still wait until you can unmute, just keep your, keep your hand up. I think if you tap the screen, does something come up where you can where there's a mute button that you can hit? Looks like a little microphone. No. OK. OK. Um, I just had two quick things. One is I dropped in the chat at the very beginning of the meeting to fill out a Google form with your availability. I'll send that out via email um, if you um, haven't um, taken it yet. Um, and then the other thing is um, I, I'm interested to know who is who wants to be part of the joint working group to finalize the development criteria with the South Side Green Zone. So I'll also include that request uh, in an email that I send out because I'll be wanting to schedule that that joint um, conversation. OK. Thank you, Kelly. Anybody else have any comments, reports, anything to contribute before we adjourn? Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. So move, second? Yep, second. Okay, thank you. We have a motion to adjourn, so everybody good night and thank you for joining us and we'll talk to you soon. Vanessa, you're still muted, dear. Good night, everybody. Peace journey to, to thank where you're- you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Anita, Vanessa, and Kelly. Coronavirus. <laughs> okay. Good night, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Take care. Okay. Can we hear you, Miss Vanessa? Was there something you wanted to share? I don't want to go off until... <laughs>